hello and welcome to That British Homestead. My name's Nick and today I thought we'd talk about all of the seeds we can sow in April. I can't believe the year is just flying by. So let's dive straight into all the new things that we can actually sow at this time of year. Big change this year for me personally, this month even, this year, this month personally, is cucurbits. So cucumbers, squashes, uh, you name it. These are things that we can actually grow this month. I like to get them at least four weeks before I sow them out. So they're like small plants, but they really go off to the races. These are very, very big plants. You don't want to sow them too early or you're going to be living in a forest. So let's have a little look. One of my personal favourites of all time. Telegraph. So Telegraph is really good. If you go to the shops and you're like, oh, I'm going to pick up a cucumber. This is the cucumber you're talking about. It's called Telegraph. I love them. They really, really are good. However, I would say that if you're going to go ahead and grow something like Telegraph, you do need to go ahead and net them because things like rats absolutely love cucumbers. Bless them. It's really hot in the summer. So having a cute bit of cucumber is so refreshing as we know um so they're going to go for the cucumbers but if you leave bowls of water in your plants you get less pet stabbage in the summer because they're looking for the water not necessarily the nutrients from the plant just a little tip little tip um i've got some of these these are just like they said mainly in china no idea what they are but they're quite exciting i don't know if i'm going to use them or not we'll see this one here is a chinese yellow uh, cucumber as you can see it's very yellow i've not actually successfully grown one of these bad boys but i look forward to trying again this year these ones i grow every year gherkins these ones are called perfect picker i love gherkins but you know who loves gherkins way more than i do jasmine so i want jars and jars and jars and jars of these put away because she has them in her lunches and actual shop bought uh, gherkins have tons and tons and tons of nitrates in them which are really bad for your bowels so we can grow them and ferment them and we can grow them and pickle them without the nitrates in them so it's quite exciting for me personally cukes uh, lemon cukes is really good i grow this every year um you've also got one called a crystal apple they're really cool as well they're slightly different color but they're basically the same thing this has been a really good producer for us we've always smashed through them i think they look really cute and they they've got an original shape they're circles and they are yellow in color and my daughter just loves them so they're really good cut up i peel them and then they're really really quite delicious um really good however you're going to use a cucumber these are really good i prefer these in salads just because they're more crunchy and they've got really good body to them whereas the telegraph are super good in well we all know how we eat a salad telegraph but these are really quite delicious I tried pickled, pickling them as well. Oh, I remember this one from last year. Oh, this one is a pan parsander. It's an F1 hybrid. It's very similar to what we have already, but I like to kind of like spread um, out the type of seeds that I'm getting. This is another F1 hybrid. This one's called Cartman. This one's worked really well. It's very similar to the Telegraph. So, like I said, I like to spread out as much as possible. I'm going to be saving seeds from these this year. I'm trying to move more into saving seeds because I feel like that's more sustainable. I don't want to continuously buy seeds and then, you know, you've got all that shipping and all of that sort of jazz and the stress of it all. So, if I am getting a... Um, type of, or variety that I do enjoy I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I am saving the seeds for it talking of saved seeds these are seeds that are saved from one of my very good friends uh, she has a farm over in Lithuania and these are her family heirlooms so I am very blessed with her giving me some of these these are pickling ones and I think it's amazing that she chose to give them these to me because these have been in her set her family for generations and that is really cool so thank you so much for them got another one called firm spot once again i just try to have as many different types of cucumbers as possible because we really do love them and then i've got these barbless ones i'm just an absolute sucker when it comes to any sort of sales so i got one called jogger and one called 
Barbless Tasty Green. These ones do need to be peeled though, so they have a really thicker skin, but they are quite nice. And the thing is, is the more varieties that you grow, always one does quite well. So I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. So we've absolutely smashed it when it comes to cucumbers all these cu cucumbers are outdoor cucumbers i don't grow any cucumbers indoors i let them branch across um because i've grown them vertically a few times and i find the yields less but people are saying that they're not necessarily so maybe i should try that again i'm not 100 percent sure so don't hold me to that next is zucchini so we have a zucchini called zucchini i know i must have been hours that they were thinking of that name but it's a normal um green zucchini there's one called piccolo which is f1 hybrid it's a round variety with strut stripes and little dots on it so it's dark green and dark dark green and light green stripes so that one's exciting i got them from the mega seed store this one is called uh summer it's a summer squash it's a patty pan which is a flat disc like um i think they look like a spaceship and to be honest there is a variety called spaceship which is quite a nice one this one's called white custard so um this one's like a round patty pan but it's white in color i think they look really really quite nice so they, they're really good i actually find that these grow better than my courgettes which is really weird because courgettes like you have them coming out your ears so you've got to be really careful of how many courgettes that you need to actually grow alexa stop this one's called spaceship this one i was just telling you about it's a yellow patty pan so once again that round color they could do bush out quite a lot whereas the winter squashes can be vining these are huge bushes so they they work out really well so this one is a yellow uh, courgette called gemma it is a very long courgette with this brilliant brilliant um yellow skin i've grown one similar to that called shooting star i find the yellow ones are less yielding my personal how i found but they are beautiful so we like quite a few of those i really like um, stir fried squash in the summer and I use a lot in powders and things like that throughout the winter so it doesn't freeze very well but you can put them in cakes and puddings and all sorts of things like that and they taste really really good I've actually known people to actually make them into jams as well sweet jams um, and I'm really looking forward to the canning season this year so I'm going to be looking at like things that I can use within canning uh, we make a lot of tomato sauce obviously but I also want to make ketchups and bubbles barbecue sauces and all the things like that nando sauces and i'm quite excited about using things like courgette in them because you can actually use them to bulk out a little bit if you don't have as many like tomatoes or whatever you can actually use it as a bulking agent which is really exciting because they've got their very subtle flavors onwards and upwards with the cuper bits we actually have something called spaghetti squash spaghetti squash is quite exciting it is about that big it's a big yellow squash really hard skinned um, it's a winter squash which means that you do grow it in summer but you can store it over winter it stores super super well uh, you just literally leave it on the side and it will store for i think about two years so from what i can gather from what i've stored mine obviously they're not in the perfect conditions but they last until almost the second summer in my humble opinion before they start going a little bit soft so they are really good you use them you bake them in the oven and you can use them as a supplement for spaghetti because as you scrape a fork in them they kind of break up and you have a spaghetti like structure um, which you can put with like tomato sauce or you know meatballs or bolognese whatever it is and it is actually quite delicious one for the kids um this is a pumpkin called um atlantic giant i grow this every year and i have to say from this packet i've grown embarrassingly small pumpkins so that's always really interesting isn't it but jasmine absolutely loves them we don't feed them um synthetic fertilizer and i do feel that if you want to have a gigantic pumpkin you do need to go ahead and um keep giving them that synthetic fertilizer and it works out super super well for them um, another one is this one is an onion squash this is a very good tasting squash i grew this last year i got i believe i got a 
like someone gave me a load of them the year before and I was just like these are so good made them into a load of soup and they were really delicious um, they're a semi bushing variety this particular one and it's called Arizona um, so I like to start them off once again a month early so they're like small but handleable handleable hand able to handle them easily when I'm planting them out um, this one is an F1 hybrid is a butternut squash butternut squash I've been growing since I start no like almost since I've started uh, gardening so I actually started off with plants because I really struggled to go ahead and germinate these easiest way to germinate them is on their side because if you lay them flat then they go ahead and pour water in them and the pulled water will go ahead and rot the seed so applying them like that works you see how old the packet is I don't know if Wilco's is shut down in your area we don't actually have Wilco's anymore around here so but these have worked out really really well I said they're an F1 hybrid called butterfly my mum loves these as well every time she comes around here she's always like oh do you have any butternut squash left and she goes home and takes a whole butternut squash with her and makes up pies and all sorts of things with it this one's really nice talking about pies this is a really really sweet um acorn variety called taffy it's really sweet it's got bright red um, flesh inside and it's green on the outside it is a very delicious variety and it's really sweet this one is a new variety for me I actually haven't broken into my crown princes yet I grew ground prince for the first time last year and the reason I grew it is because it has a really good um, it's a really good variety for storage so I went ahead and made sure that I had one of those in the ground so far so good it's stored really well but because it stores really well I'm kind of using that one at the last I'm using up all of the varieties that aren't so good at you know storing beforehand so I'm really excited about trying that one down there and I'm going to go ahead and plant some more of those this year this one is a great variety I really like this it's a, a nice meal to have when you're in a little bit of rush and especially when the potatoes start to run out and that's baked potato squash I love this with baked beans and some cheese um, on like a Wednesday night when you can't bother to cook it tastes just like potato but the reason why I like it so much is because in a couple of months time we don't have any potatoes and all the potatoes in storage are starting to run out so when this comes it's like I'm craving a little bit of potato and it works out really really nicely and you honestly can't tell the difference between that pumpkin uh, sorry winter squash and an actual potato so that is incredible I've got another um, butternut squash variety here this one delicata it's sweet potato squash I've started to buy this because um sorry so I started to sow this on the basis that sweet potatoes don't grow very well out here but I love sweet potato so this is a good compromise and it's really delicious nice roasted I've just got my first varieties here and I did a sweet potato and butternut squash soup and honestly it tastes like I put sweet potato on it and I did a whole bed of sweet potatoes last year and I must have got like one sweet potato so this is a way better way of budgeting my space within the allotment that I personally feel if you know how to grow sweet potatoes in the UK then well done please let me know down below I've always struggled to do so this one is mashed potato squash very similar to baked potato squash it's absolutely delicious really creamy I've still got a few um, seeds left in there so I'm going to go ahead and sow them I need to make sure that I am collecting seeds from these bad boys this year so I don't run out the next thing that I'm super excited to sow and this is a super excited one is beans these are all the beans that I've been saving um, so what I do is I take what I need um, to sow this year and then I'm going to be making these into like baked beans kidney beans etc and have them um, stored in cans with my pressure can up so that I have them and I don't need to run to the store and grab any once again canned food uh, that you get from supermarkets is full of salt and I can make them without salt and it's a really it's kind of a staple in our household we eat a lot of beans and we have a lot of chilies etc so these work out really well and they've got such beautiful varieties in there um, I like these yin yang ones that are just about there to be honest I've got so many I've forgotten all the varieties of the ones that we save however we do have some that I've bought we've got moonlight beans and I actually saw this 
on someone's channel, I cannot remember for the life of me who had them up. But the reason I got them is because they've got beautiful white flowers on runner beans. And when I, this winter, I was really craving runner beans. So I thought, hey, I'm going to grow them this, you know, in the summer and they're going to be delicious. So I'm really looking forward to those. French, um, French beans, I love. These are called Sun these are called sunrise so they're the thinner beans these are the ones that tend to be quite expensive in the shop so it's always really good to have in your garden spaces because you save a lot of money on the old food bill so i quite like these i also always save my own seeds beans are super easy to save seeds from all you do is leave them on there they dry on the plant and then you go ahead and take them off the plant if you've got kids they actually really like shooking them which is really good because i actually don't <laughs> so jazzy always helps me go ahead and save these seeds these ones are I think quite beautiful they're called uh, purple queen now purple queen they are purple when you pick them but when you cook them they do go green so just to avoid disappointment they are beautiful though I would love a way of being able to preserve the purple color when you cook them but I don't know any any way of doing so but I do think they're worth having they are a French variety like I said and they're just absolutely gorgeous they're dwarf varieties I quite like the bush beans I think that they work out really well I prefer to harvest them especially when they're like a dark color or the light yellow ones because they're so much easier to find when you're going ahead and looking for them within the like green jungle that you're growing uh french dwarf beans these ones as well these ones are called harriot no these are called fire tongue which is beautiful um i save these for their beautiful beans that are inside i do have a few in there but i'm not going to fish them out because they're going to go everywhere and they're really nice in soups and stews and things like that um i think they look really nice i like a mixed bean when i go ahead and um, save them in any form even if I'm making just baked beans like Heinz baked beans or if I'm making mixed beans for like throwing them into different um, meals like chilies and stuff like that I just think they give the meal like a more beautiful texture and flavour in my personal opinion these as well I buy quite a few of these and you probably do too they're just multi packs of different beans and I just think it's a great way of like branching into unusual veg you've got um, some per long climbers all of these ones are but these are the purple beans they're really thin once again French beans um, you've got green ones and you've got the yellow ones there so you've got Maricrispa, Marigosna and Cartonat um my daughter and my partner prefer the french beans um they didn't grow up eating runner beans like i did so my daughter just always prefer french beans and she eats a lot of french beans most of the ones that we store she ends up eating and they're so easy to store all you do is pick them and throw them in a freezer bag and boil them when you want them so they're super easy to store and like i said i think out of like the bags and bags and bags and bags of them that we save, I'd say she eats probably about 90% of them. So it's more for her that we save these beans for because she absolutely adores them than, than for us. So it's something that we always have on the basis that she absolutely loves them. So this is something we're gonna to continue to sow throughout April and this is peas. Another thing that my daughter absolutely loves, these are called Shiraz, these are purple peas. They are Monge 2 variety. She loves these for school. Um, she takes them with like a little bit of ranch dressing and just dips them. She absolutely loves them. And these ones are Petit Pois, which are little peas, really, really sweet peas. Both are really good for kids. They absolutely love them. I know that she picks tons of these off the vine and just devours them. So we don't get too many for freezing, but she eats a lot of them during the summer. And I just worry about her getting her five a day. But in the summer, I actually don't have that worry at all. I'm more like, ooh, what happens when you eat too many vegetables? <laughs> Because they're really freely available. She's out in the garden all day playing with the ducks and she just walks up and snacks. And she's doing that. So we try to grow as much things that are easily snackable in the garden to make sure that we're promoting her with her healthy eating. So if you've got grandkids or kids, these are the sort of things that you want to be sowing because they're something they'll grab and eat and they're so sweet they'll go back and back and back again for them. You won't get a harvest, but you know their tums are going to be full of wonderful vegetables, which is 
are half the battle, isn't it? So throughout April, we're gonna continue to grow carrots and I have done a load of carrots and we talked about them in our last video. I'll attach the video at the end of this one. So please go ahead and watch that if you wanna know more about the carrot varieties that we are growing. Another thing that we're going to continue to grow is our cabbages. I talked about loads of brassicas and stuff like that in our last video, please go ahead and watch that. Um, one of the ones is Savoy cabbage. I absolutely love Savoy cabbage. My sister actually got me this packet for my birthday or one of my birthday presents, which I was really thankful for. This is another one I spoke a long time about. And yes, I've still got more Autumn King in that, uh, Autumn King. This is Debden, which is very similar to um, January King, which is just, at, isn't it beautiful? So I've got tons and tons of different cabbages that I'm going to go ahead and grow. Another thing that I'm gonna go ahead and grow is our purple sprouting broccoli. Getting absolutely tons of that coming in at the moment and using it for stir fries, Sunday dinners, etc. And I'm absolutely loving it. It's one of, once again, my daughter's favorite vegetables to be eating. So it's really important that we have loads of that. Um, although this year I did do three or four plants. I just don't think that was enough. I think I need to do about five or six. So I have some in the freezer as well because we are eating as much as we're getting, which means that we do eat a lot of broccoli, but it's so nice because we only get it some of the year. So it is something that we absolutely devour. And I know that it's one of her favorite vegetables to be having. And she's always very eager when it comes into the house. She eats it raw, she eats it fried, she eats it, you name it. So it's something that I want to make sure that we've got in our diet for next year. Now, moving on to something that we haven't been able to grow yet, sweet corn. I'm really super excited about sweet corn. My sister actually got me this variety. It's called golden Da Damon, Damon. Um, this is a really cool variety, but I also saved a load of sweet corn last year, and it's so easy to save seeds from sweet corn. So this is my sweet corn that I saved last year. I grew this with sweet. Um, I grew this sweet corn with the beans growing up it, and it worked out really well. So I'm going to go ahead and do the three sisters again this year in my back garden, and I saved so many. I actually gave my mum a load of sweet corn seeds and I had enough to like send off to see saving banks, you name it. I think I saved in the end three corns, ears of corn, sorry, accidentally, mostly because I didn't see them. So I let them dry on the cob and then I just pulled them off and I chucked them myself. And as you can see, I've got absolutely tons of seed for this year. But as my sister's already given me some more sweet corn, I'm gonna grow both, why not? I'm gonna grow quite a lot. I think I grew 36 ears of sweet corn last year. So I'm going to double that 72 sweet corns this year because we got through it like that. And I really like to um, cut the uh, sweet corn off the corns and we have it in like stews, soups, chilies, etc. And I, it's just so convenient to have it and getting a scoop out of it from the freezer. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. Uh, one that was a fantastic harvest for us last year was our beetroot. And we still have beetroot that we're eating on that we stored in wood chips um, over the summer. So I've got Red Ace, it's a new variety for me. It's a F1 hybrid. I've never tried this one before, but I'm excited about it. Chikara, which is a candied beetroot. It's got the bands of white and red, which has worked out really, really well. Avalanche, these produce massive, and I mean massive, sugar beets. And they're white in colour. They are really, really good and they're huge. Um, this one, Cylindrica, this is a really good variety for those of us who like pickled beetroots because they're long and thin and you get an equal slice throughout them. So it looks really uniform within the pickle. Border, so I'm super excited about having fresh beetroots. I absolutely love borscht, so it's gonna be super exciting having that back in our diet. Fresh beetroot for next year as well. The last and final thing we're going to be growing is flowers. So we can do things like sunflowers. This is a mixed variety. I love the mixed varieties. I do have some saved seeds from last year and I love saving my own seeds really recklessly. I don't try to stop them crossing. She gets so many more beautiful colors and flavors, colors, etc. from them. And I really like having the 
uh, sunflower heads, I give them to the chickens and the ducks and the, it boosts their food in the winter because I do feel sorry for them all chilly and miserable outside in the winter. Um, we've got forget-me-nots, they really remind me of Nan. I know they're a weed but my Nan grew them so I'm going to be growing them. Got some chrysanthemums, um, I don't think I've ever grown these from seed but it's worth a go. Uh, any tips and tricks about these uh, crazy flowers will be appreciated. These ones are a sunflower. I'm like pretty sure their name's Ruby, but it's rubbed off. These are red variety. I've got some saffron. This is false saffron, which I'm going to be harvesting. It's like a thistle. It's really cool. Um, I've got some poppies. One of Jasmine's favourite. We've talked about the poppies. We always sow them right next to our... Um, strawberries because they drop loads of red petals everywhere and it confuses the birds and we have some <laughs> cauliflower of course okay thank you so much for watching I really appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me today and if you haven't done already please consider subscribing because honestly on a small channel like mine it really means so much to us you have a lovely day and I'll see you very very soon bye bye so that's 12, 60, 70.